Hey everybody, it's David. So last month, as you probably remember, astronomers in Europe made the historic announcement of a discovery of a planet around our nearest star, Proxima Centauri. The team used the radial velocity or wobbling star method to make this discovery, which allowed them to say that this planet likely has the same mass as the Earth, and it also orbits its star at the right distance for liquid water on its surface. So super exciting. So it really is Christmas come early for astronomers, but if astronomers could have our cake and eat it, if we could ask for one more thing, it would be that this planet Proxima b also transits in front of its host star. And that's what me and my team have been trying to figure out. So I just submitted the paper announcing the results from our transit survey. And that's what I'm gonna tell you about in this video. But if you want more backstory, then you can hear about the discovery from Guillem over here. And you can also hear about some of the backstory of our own transit survey down here. So remember that a transit is just another word for an eclipse. It means that we are looking for the planet to pass in front of its parent star, thus blocking out some of Proxima Centauri's light for maybe an hour or two. Now, of course, not all planets are going to be perfectly aligned to our line of sight such that we can see them transit. In fact, the probability that Proxima Centauri b will transit is only 1.5%. Okay, bear that in mind, that's quite low odds. So essentially we are looking for these transits by taking a photo of Proxima Centauri about once per minute from space and seeing if the brightness of that image decreases for a short amount of time. Now the biggest problem that we found during our analysis is that the star itself, Proxima Centauri, is exhibiting intrinsic brightness variations at a much higher amplitude than the transit signal which we seek. The origin of this intrinsic variability of Proxima Centauri are flares occurring on the star. So actually flares happen on the Sun, but on Proxima Centauri it just happens way more frequently. So to correct for this intrinsic variability, we had to invoke some fairly fancy statistical machinery. Specifically, we used Bayesian model selection with a likelihood function specified by a Gaussian process. Next time you want to impress your friends and they ask you how you figured something out, just say that. So what do we find? Well, when we use the time of predicted transit from the discovery paper, we actually do find a significant transit-like signal there. You can see the signal here. We call it signal C for candidate in our paper. Now the depth of that transit event tells us how large the planet is, which is passing in front of the star. Now the size of this planet or the radius of this planet that we freely fit for is pretty much exactly what we would expect given its mass. It comes out at 20% larger than the Earth. So me and my team were really excited when we saw this. I mean, we have a signal here which is statistically significant, occurs at the right time, has the right orbital period, and when you freely fit the radius, gives the right answer that you would expect. So this was really exciting. But being good scientists, we didn't just take that on faith that we had discovered something. You always want to run checks to see how often could you have gotten a signal like that even when there was nothing really there. And that's what we did. So we actually looked at different times where we really were not expecting Proxima b to transit and counted how often do we think we see something similar to this. So unfortunately, we do find signals like this occurring at times when Proxima b really cannot transit. It is remotely possible that there are just lots of transiting planets in this system and all of those transits are in there and we've just detected all of them. But let's be honest, it's probably more likely that this is just the flares tricking us. The flares are creating signals which do look like transits. So were we being tricked by flares or were we finding lots of planets and this signal we found really was the signal of Proxima b? Well, one way to check that out is to look at other independent data sets of this star, and they do exist. So I got on the phone to my old PhD advisor, Gaspar Bakos, who runs the Hat South Network. That's a network of small telescopes distributed across the Southern Hemisphere, which have been looking at Proxima Centauri, amongst many other stars, over the last few years. So this is the shape of the transit that we would expect Hat South to see in their data, it's shown by that solid line. And now here for comparison is what the data from Hat South shows. From a statistical perspective, the Hat South data prefers that there is no transit of Proxima b versus a transit of Proxima b at a confidence level of about 70 to 90%, depending how you dice it up. 
So 70 to 90%, I mean, it's not that strong a confidence level. We would prefer something that was like 99.99%. Now, because the Hat South data doesn't favor the presence of this transit, because the star itself is very, very variable and thus pretty tricky to us, and finally, because the chance a priori of this planet transiting is just 1.5%, all of those things lead us to suspect that we really do not have a signal here. But if we want a completely conclusive answer, we're probably gonna to have to use an infrared space telescope such as Spitzer. So really the conclusion of our paper is that we think it's actually pretty unlikely that this planet transits its star. Sad face. So yes this is disappointing, transits would be the shortcut to measuring the atmosphere of this planet, but it doesn't close the door. There are other methods available to us. They're just a little bit harder. Ultimately I don't think we can be too disappointed. I mean come on guys, we have an Earth mass planet at the right distance for life around our nearest star. And yes, it doesn't transit, but the chance of that happening was only 1.5%. For me, I'm just glad this whole ordeal is over. I've been working ridiculously hard to get this done over the last few weeks, and I finally want to turn my attention back to looking for exomoons and all the other projects we have here at the Coolworks Lab. So if you liked this video and you want to hear more about the research happening here at the Coolworks Lab, then make sure you click the subscribe button below to get all of that. So thank you so much for watching this video, everybody. You can expect a new guest video coming your way in less than a week. So until then, stay curious.